This programme is an Orange Bag Media production. I make these uh, mistakes, but please don't tell anybody. <laughs> Welcome to Italy. This is a country that has motorsport running through its veins. We're in the Tuscany hills, heart-wrenchingly beautiful. The river Siev runs through the valley and the area around this river is known as the region of Mugello. Traditional towns, some also bearing the name of Mugello, but throughout the world and especially the sport-minded part of it, the region is best known for the Mugello circuit. And it's here where we've gathered for the Hankook 12 Hours of Mugello. We are in uh, beautiful Italy in the uh, circuit of uh, Mugello. Beautiful Tuscany hills, beautiful weather. Yeah, what we want more. Uh, we expect a good battle in both the GT and TCE fields. We're happy to have a full grid for the start of our European season. So let's see how the tactics will be after three hours of racing. This Italian challenge is spread over three days, starting on Thursday with some private test sessions. Friday, free practice qualifying in the first three hours of the race. Then on Saturday, the second nine-hour part of the race. Let's jump in on Friday during qualifying. And first, it was the turn of the touring cars. Qualification is, is very good, but uh, I take the pole position with the, the SP3 class and I'm very, very happy. And, uh, but the race is very, very long. Time available for qualifying was reduced when René Rasmussen had to be recovered from the gravel. René, uh, he wanted some more track time, so uh, we gave him uh, the, the second test today and also the quali. And I think uh, you know, when you're pushing the car and you don't know the limits and and I think it was uh, pushing it too hard with cold tyres, so yeah. But remarkably, the team still captured the pole for the A3 class. I did uh, the second stint in the, the quali and I think it, uh, yeah, it worked well out and uh, the, the car is good. The overall touring car pole sitter, the number 109 Cupra from Monlau. Oh, the wall is very good, more than I ex expect, so I could find P1 and the, the lap time was very quick. I want to say thank you to the team, thank you, very good car, very good performance on the car, it's, it's unbelievable, yeah. Before the GT entries could be unleashed for their qualifying sessions, there was a problem on the track that needed to be resolved. It was a team that mentioned it and said, we think there is something wrong in the turn eight. Uh, can you take a look at it? The, the top of the, the, the drainage system uh, for the, the, the water was off, uh, was damaged. Uh, we had a hole and we have to repair it first. This was a problem that would need specialist outside assistance and that could have delayed the programme by several hours. So race direction found a slightly quicker solution. We, we put soil in it, earth and stones, and then we uh, make a complete flat floor and, and uh, yeah, that, that was fine. And so we could continue in a very fast way. And so the qualifying continued for the GT division. We did a uh, really nice time. Uh, the team did a great job. Uh, we are starting from pole for the first uh, half of the race, so it's uh, really nice to be on pole. We had just uh, one, one run and I uh, was able to manage quite a good time. I mean, it was not that easy due to the temperature and the, um, the issue on the track uh, with the curb. But at the end, I think we can uh, be quite Happy with the result. Overall pole set by SPS Automotive and their number 16 car. Great pole lap uh, for us to be sat at the front is uh, is fantastic, but uh, it's all very short lived. Uh, only an hour later, we're here on the grid ready to start the race. So uh, fingers crossed we can stay in this position, but uh, we always know these Creventec races are uh, are tricky. 
The Hankook 12 Hours of Mugello starts with three hours of competition today and will continue tomorrow for the final nine hours. So what are the drivers expecting? We are up there now and, and yeah, we uh, will try to, to control the, the, the race a bit, but you never know what other are doing. Uh, you never know, 12 hours, the race is long. For the moment, this evening, we, we try to stay in the lap of the leader and tomorrow morning we will see. Yeah, for sure I want to win. Yeah, but I try to win, but, but, but the first thing, I want to finish the race first and the, the race is not, not the important thing, yeah. There's three parts to it, you know, we, we've ticked off qualifying, we're looking very good. We now have three hours to, to manage, you know, at, uh, at the very worst, we want to stay on the, on the lead lap and stay competitive. Uh, hopefully we can stay in, in our position, but uh, our strategy is uh, more about being there at the end tomorrow. The cars are on the warm-up lap, although now later than originally scheduled due to that track repair, the organisers are also anxiously awaiting the start. We have 56 cars competing in the race uh, today. Very happy for the start of our European season. Um, divided in both GT and uh, TCE, and uh, we're ready for the first part to start. With the cars on their warm-up lap, JR Motorsport BMW is waiting in pit lane. The team didn't get it to the grid in time. After the first warm-up lap, the number 203 was allowed to join the field as the last car of the GT entries. With all the cars now out on the circuit, the drivers are instructed to get into their grid positions so that as soon as the pace car is off the track, the GT cars can start their first race in this year's European Championship, the Hankook 12 Hours of Mugello. The lights are out and the number 16 is under threat of losing its lead before the first corner. Attacked on the left side by the Hoffa Racing number 10 and on the right, the number 11 Ferrari, Tim Muller not able to capitalise on his start from pole position and has to battle in the following corners just to hold on to fourth place overall. The Lamborghini number 32 goes through and pushes the pole sitter down to fifth. That's a disappointing start for the German team. There are 12 hours to make up for the places they've lost here. Meanwhile, after their warm-up laps, getting ready for the start of 12 hours of racing in the first race of this year for the Touring Car Endurance Series. The lights go out again, and now both series have started their race here in Tuscany. The number 109 of Monlau competition capitalises on pole position and they're leading the touring car division towards the first corner. A lot of battling going on in the field behind them, though. No, the start was good, and obviously we have the two starting groups here, uh, which I think helps quite a lot in sorting out the confusion with traffic and so on. Uh, but no, it was good. Uh, had a decent start, had a better start than cars in front, but the start was let go quite early, so we could not overtake until the start-finish line, so we had to drop back a few positions. But uh, yeah, it was OK. Back in GT, Matteo Malicelli showing his knowledge of the track. Christian Frankenhout, nearest contender in second, but the battle is on between the cars in third and fourth position. Yeah, it was a nice start. It was my first, it's my first endurance race with a GT3, so I was a bit nervous to don't make a mistake. Um, uh, was a bit hard to drive with the heavy car. It was uh, the fuel was uh, full, so I was a bit, yeah, a bit was thinking how to drive. And then one Lambo driver crashed a bit into me, so we had a slight damage in the rear. Dopo un paio di giri, sono riuscito subito a prenderlo. Mi ha chiuso, pensavo che mi lasciava un po' più di spazio e purtroppo ho avuto un piccolo contatto, però tutto ok. Yes. Ok, uh, after a few laps, uh, he arrived uh, up to the second position uh, near car collection number 88. Vito thought to be at the apex before the other car, but the other car closed, uh, so a small collision, but all ok. Of course, there's fierce competition right the way through the field, including here with the MRS GT Racing number 426. Yeah, the start was amazing. We were four cars together. Uh, we had, uh, from the beginning, it was quite uh, uh, not so fast. We were, like, uh, fighting with the other slow cars. And uh, it was quite uh, good because there weren't any uh, damage of the car, so we could uh, continue and, and uh, uh, nothing big happened. The faster GT cars have caught up the TCE entries, who of course are also having their own battles. Everyone now having to be very aware 
of what's going on around them. So the GT cars are very nice. Some of the GT cars are quite rude, uh, but you know which ones are which. Uh, so you, you kind of learn to look out for them to, towards the end of your stint, at least. Emil has his own battles to fight. Uh, well, I had one with uh, the Red Camel car and the Wolf Power car. Both of them were, were really good. Um, it, it's a few ducks and dives to get past them, and uh, but but both drivers were really fair, really fun. So it's what you want endurance racing to be like. The green number one on the side of the 109 Monlau entry, signifying that is still leading in TCE. They have converted their pool position into a decent lead in this early part of the race. The GT pool sitter hasn't done so well. They've come into the pit lane. The car has made contact with the barriers and is in with a broken suspension part. The team have decided to retire the car. Then the Porsche number 987 of Race Union comes in with a punctured tyre. And they're not the only one with that issue. The MRS number 426 limping towards the pit crew with a puncture. Unfortunately, it's uh, happened in the start uh, and finish line. Uh, so I had to go uh, hold a lap uh, with a puncture, so very slow. And then in the end, when I, before I entered the pit, uh, it was code 60. So also we can't uh, refuel for the maximum. So we need to stop again and refuel a little bit more to finish uh, this three hours. With the car at the side of the track, we'll take this opportunity to look at the standings after the first hour of racing. Overall standings show the top nine cars are all either A6 Pro or A6 Am entries. The Bohemia Energy Racing with Scuderia Praha Ferrari holds position number one, 19 seconds ahead of the Hoffa Racing number 10 in second. In third, the 77 from Barwell Motorsport. In TCR, it's even tighter. The number 109 Monlau Competition Cupra has a gap of 10 seconds over the AC Motorsport Audi number 188 in second, and another Audi, the 115 from Bonk Motorsport in third. The other class rundowns are on the right of the screen. In the GT4 class, Hoffa number 50 leading, Pro Sport number one second, and MRS number 426 in third. This is endurance. That's life. Endurance is life. I love it. It's so many things in it. Tactic, the mechanics, the preparation before the race, the race itself, and uh, the combination of everything is lovely. I love it. It's to be stable over a long time and consequent. We're in Italy at a track that everyone who visits loves. Mugello is important also for Italy, but uh, um, the landscape uh, is fantastic, uh, the person here are fantastic, uh, and uh, be here is very, very important for us. Uh, and be here with 24-hour series is uh, very important too, and more. The circuit inspires love and respect from its drivers. I mean, it's uh, quite a classic and old-fashioned racetrack here uh, in the heart of uh, Italy, so I guess it's one of the best tracks in the world. We love Mangello. I think this is the second or third time that we've come uh, here in, for the Curvantic series over the past uh, three or four years, and uh, we, we love it. It's a fantastic circuit, lots of history. It's first time for me here. The, the track is very good and also very fast running, so I like it. The track is like really fast running and clear, big corner, big, big track is very good. I like it very much, you know, uh, the, the, the combination, you know, it's, it's very nice, you know, high speed corners and also some s slow corners, so I really enjoyed it. Let's have Matteo Malacelli show us round a lap. There is a long straight and then there is a, a good braking, but it's not heavy braking because the first corner is quite fast. And then you go up, there is a chicane left and right and then uh, a small straight line, and then uh, again left and right. And then there is, for me, the, the best part of the circuit, and then the Casanova Savelli and the two Arabiata. And there are really fast corners in uh, fourth gear. And then uh, you, you, you come down uh, right and left, and then a long corner to the right. Uh, the Biondetti corners, that for us are full, uh, full throttle uh, corners, but it's really fast. And in the last corner, the Bucine is a long left corner. When we left racing, the number 14 car was stranded at the side of the circuit, but even before the Code 60 was called, 
BMW number 310 collected a penalty for overtaking under double yellow flags. Yeah, I didn't saw it. I didn't saw it. It, it, it was I was overtaking somebody, and and uh, I saw the car was standing uh, uh, on the left uh, side of the of the track, and it was uh, chuck 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 chuck, and uh, <laughs> it was it was going uh, very quick. The new Audi of Speed Lover team has pulled over with a broken gearbox. It's been a good lesson for the team manager. There's no real mistake, no driver mistake, no mechanic mistake, just bad luck. So it happens, but that's. Over now, I learned something about Audi. You can look in the gearbox. I didn't know that, so voila. During the Code 60, it's a good opportunity for the race director to check that troublesome hole at the side of the track. We filled it with soil and with stones, and we saw that there were some cars who uh, had no respect for the track limits there go over it, and we were afraid that the, 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 the tyres would ruin uh, the the repair again so we take every time a look and we filled it up again so it was in the same height so nobody had damage because of the hole in the curbs. It's back to racing with battles from the word go. Trouble for the 32 Ferrari facing the wrong direction after a collision and rear suspension damage will have to be fixed and another collision between the 676 Honda puts the 130 Hyundai out of the race. We've been to the Clark of the course, we've shown our footage on it, and it just seems the Hyundai driver didn't see us on the outside of him. Uh, he's coming back across then and maybe just didn't see we were there. And I'm on the brakes as hard as I could before the, any contact, but then it was just the, the pit, the wave hit his rear wheel or halfway down the car, it spun him round, and unfortunately I think it might be, might be up for them. The number 188 Audi takes over the lead with less than an hour to go in the first day of racing. Two fields running at the same time, that's the challenge here at Mugello. It's a very fun, it's a very nice track, it's a difficult track, a technical track. And um, in the TCR class we are 13 cars, so it's very tough competition and uh, it's uh, great fun. But no, unfortunately we dropped to 10th place or so. It's a long race, but we will see. As the race started an hour later than expected, not all of the drivers are aware that they must switch on their lights. Some of them not aware how to switch on their lights. Uh, yeah, I, um, I was very late with switching the light on, so at first it was, uh, I didn't see anything, so, but then I found the switch and uh, so everything fine. With just over 15 minutes to go here on Friday, a yellow flag is being waved. Have a look here, on the right of the onboard, the Pro Sport number one has stalled at the side of the track. Cars dive into the fuel station to try and get as much petrol as possible, ready for the race restart tomorrow. But it's so busy in the fuel station, cars are queued up, waiting and losing more time. We had really good pace, but made a mistake in strategy. We went into the pit, uh, we waited for the refuel, then it became green, so we skipped the refuel and we spent, I think, almost two, three minutes in the pit basically for nothing. Uh, that got us out of the lead lap and now we are one lap down, so that's uh, it's not so good, but uh, we will fight again tomorrow and we will see where we end up. The 980 Porsche is in trouble and they're not the only ones. So I make a, a turn like that and after me, three other cars do the same thing at the same place. So I don't know what's happened already. Maybe we were, we were tired or the, the track was wet, I don't know. Another Code 60 required, and that will bring an end to the first three hours of this 12 hours of Mugello. The car that crossed the finish line first on Friday, the number 11 Ferrari. We didn't have the 24-hour lights on, so it was just the standard lights. So it was a bit challenging, but otherwise OK. I'm just a bit ashamed that, uh, that we lost the one lap lead because the second Lambo overtook me in a few last laps. I was just say, trying to save the fuel and uh, get the maximum from the car, which this time wasn't the perfect timing, let's say. An exciting and competitive first part of the race completed. This is great that we're leading because it's the first step, but still it's just three hours. Uh, the rest is tomorrow, which is most important, so we hope that it will be, well, hopefully same like it is. <laughs> well, uh, I was now one hour, 30 minutes in the car. It was very heavy. We have uh, two code 60 and then the last 10 minutes we have code 60 and lots of gravel on the track, but it was okay, fine. Uh, a little bit dark at the end. <laughs> Didn't see much anymore, but all in all, I'm fine. Uh, it was uh, difficult at the end, 
but good. It was a good race. I love this circuit. Let's have a look at the standings after the first three hours. The cars are parking up on the main grid. That's the designated park Fermi. The Bohemia Energy number 11 Ferrari has finished in the lead. Barwell Motorsport number 77 Lamborghini Huracan Evo second. And the 88 Audi from Car Collection is third in the standings. In TCE, it's the 109 Cupra of Monlau Competition who have the lead. They've finished 43 seconds ahead of the number 112 Autorama Volkswagen. And another 2 minutes and 23 seconds back was the AC Motorsport Audi 188. With its only full lap advantages that are carried forward to tomorrow, that means when we restart tomorrow, the top three in TCE will be side by side again. Saturday morning, and the cars have been parked up overnight on the main straight. Those that required work went back to the garage. Yeah, when a car really has damage or is not doing well, the team has the possibility to uh, work at the car during the night. The only consequence is that they get a 10 laps uh, penalty. Another overnight repair was the fixing of the drain at the side of the track. Uh, it's repaired, it's still fresh, so the, we ask the drivers to get off the, uh, off the hole, but it, it's repaired, it's good now. Yesterday's pole sitter in the TCE series is on pole again today. They had a good first three hours. Yeah, but that's only part one, yes? But today is a little less for the 12 hour. We need to finish it in the first position. We had a good uh, race yesterday, so we, we can uh, focus now on the, on the, on the today and then, yeah. Let's have some fun and have a good race and um, for sure I also want to push and uh, maybe we can uh, take a little bit in the beginning. Yeah. Well, we're always, obviously always hoping for the win, um, but you know, we, we, run our, we run our strategy based on how the, how the race folds out, so we'll see. You know, I mean, first race of the championship, we're going for a championship, so. It's my first time in TCR normally, normally at the front in the GT3 car, so it's a bit of a learning process and my three teammates who are doing a great job, Tom, Chris and David, uh, but it's a learning curve, so we just keep out of trouble, try and keep a reasonably good pace, and uh, see where we end up in nine hours' time. I'm full of instructions uh, how to heat up my tyres for the first two laps, uh, to, keep, to keep them warm, to get them warm, and then uh, we'll see what happens. Eh? Then we have nine hours of uh, big fun racing looking ahead of us. Both series competitors have completed their two warm-up laps, once again, it'll be the GT field who will start off today's racing. The pace car has pulled off, and now it's up to the number 11 Ferrari to set the pace of the field as we come towards the starting line for the second part of the Hankook 12 Hours of Mugello. The lights are off, and the field rushes down towards the first right-hander. From third position, but already challenging for second, the number 88 of Car Collection Motorsport. Uh, it was really fun. Uh, at the start, I, uh, I immediately took the Lambo. After that, the pace was pretty good. Uh, we were just getting hauled up by, uh, by Malicelli from the Ferrari. He wouldn't let me pass, uh, but eventually I got past them and I uh, drove away a little bit. So, lap time-wise, it was really good. With the second pace car off the track, the touring cars are led towards their restart by the Spanish team of Monlau competition with their driving team from Thailand. From under the bridge, the number 109 takes an early lead. The battles behind them, though, the 188 of AC Motorsport, who started from third, and the 137, who started from fifth. There was a lot of strategy choices last night with teams staying out, trying to get better track position. The 77 Barwell Lamborghini is the first to come in for fuel today and they are followed in by other teams who didn't finish yesterday's race with enough fuel for a full stint today. Uh, we had uh, really bad luck with Code 60 um, and we had to come in very early uh, because we had uh, not a lot of fuel left from yesterday. Um, so yeah, we had, it was just a bad gambling. Um, yeah. Sometimes we have luck, sometimes not. Racing in this Creventic organised endurance series, really quite different from your average sprint race. Biggest difference is the amount of car that is in the track. 60 car in a 5.2 kilometre is basically one car every 100 metres. So you are continuously in a fight or as you are in the middle, middle of a fight and then a GT3 car comes and needs to overtake and you need to leave room and then you need to start a fight again. 
then while you are on the right spot, maybe you have to overlap somebody. So it's it's a lot of fun, a lot of fun. I've been used to sprint racing, which is drive as fast as possible for a short period of time. Here you you think about many different things, tires, brakes, all this kind of fuel saving. So it's different, but the racing is still the same. NKPP Porsche 991, not facing in the right racing direction. I was driving behind a, a competitor in a Porsche, and in the second chicane, uh, in the middle way, you're not supposed to break a while, whilst I'm driving bumper to bumper. He, he uh, gives me a brakes test, so I have to respond, and then I, uh, then I break out. That's not a problem. <laughs> the thing is, I'm standing uh, 50 centimeters off the wall, and then I want to put it into reverse, but my reverse doesn't work. <laughs> So I couldn't go anywhere. There's a problem for the race leader in TCE. Cantati Kusiri grinds to a halt at the pit lane entry. Half an hour required for repairs. But even that hasn't diminished their pleasure of racing here. It's a big pleasure. You know, we, we enjoy these races. My mechanics enjoy the staff and the engineers as well. So really great to be here. But the team's also coming in to repair their cars. Yeah, yeah. When, uh, when I was off taking, we were touched from the left side. Left, left rear side and uh, the wheel was slightly off, that's why we had to uh, readjust the toe, but now everything is fine. There was a problem in the car, I noticed a lot of smoke coming from the rear of the car. I didn't feel any different, but so we came into the pit and we noticed that the rear arm, the right rear arm of the car had broken, so um, we were able to replace it and not lose much, too much time and get back into the race. Off track, near the barriers, Joe Foster in the number 85. I got into the car, uh, it was my first time on stickers for the weekend based on how we run in practice. So I had a, uh, I made a mistake on the outlap, I had a quick spin on the outlap, um, got going again and when we, uh, we finished that lap, I think we were about 20 seconds, uh, still in the lead fortunately, and by the end of the stint we were about 40 seconds in the lead. The Volkswagen from Autorama Motorsport by Wolf Power Racing is setting good times at the moment. In the moment it looks really good, so we fight for P1. Now we stay on P1 and we are on the same strategy than the other two cars behind us. So in the moment it looks good, but it's a long way to go. Let's check where that Volkswagen number 112 is in the standings as well as all the other competitors. In the overall standings, Barwell Motorsport have taken over the lead, but not by much. The Bohemia Energy Ferrari number 11, just 14 seconds behind. The gap to third position and the number 91 Porsche of Herbert Motorsport, slightly larger, one lap. The leading A6 Amcar, the CP Racing AMG number 85, just a 23 second lead on the Ferrari number 48 from Rinaldi. Car Collection Motorsport with their number 34 Audi is one lap further back in the standings. A3 category in TCE has Dan Agro Racing's number 685 leading, the WEC Motorsport number 639 is second, Synchro Motorsport 676 is third. This is Endurance. It starts on Wednesday, you take the flight, you go to uh, lovely Italy uh, with a nice hotel, then we meet everybody in the pit, then it's free practice, then it's the day after, it's qualification, then we have a race. What's the whole thing? It's the build-up, it's the race, it's the emotions, the noise, uh, the smell of burning rubber. I mean, that's 24-hour racing. The 24-hour endurance series powered by Hankook is known for their organisers' openness and their ability to communicate. They don't just tell you the rules, they listen to everything the drivers and teams have to say. I, I think a lot of teams have more knowledge than I have of tracks, of uh, cars or other things. So we always listen, but we have to... The, our borders are the, the regulations and the FIA regulations, uh, so we have to, to uh, st stay between. And But if, if a team has a good suggestion, we follow it, of course. Good communication essential between the entrants and the organisers, but also between the teams themselves. We love that teams and drivers talk to each other. If they have a contact, we want them to talk to each other, because they both made a mistake. And if they talk to each other and they can explain to each, to, to each other what was wrong, they see as each other as, as, as more as friends than as enemies. It is, and I think that is something that Creventic have in their rule book, that if there is any contact, you must go and see the clerk of the course and the drivers must speak to each other. And uh, I think that's quite important, otherwise, you know, things build and things, you know, they, 
maybe rivalries or build on something that doesn't need to be built on. And uh, every driver that we've spoken to today has been has been good. They've accepted maybe where was their concern or maybe something that we could help them with. And uh, no, it definitely helps in the long run. It's it's not all borders and 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 closed pit boxes. They walk in and out to each other and they talk to each other. And it's always a nice, friendly way. Especially if you look behind the pit boxes, then you see that there is always crew outside and they talk to each other that they exchange uh, tools and other things and yeah this is how sport should be i think here in the picturesque tuscan hills this is the hankook 12 hours of Mugello. the battle still on in all classes and all divisions the lead in the a6 am class of the gt division currently held by cp and their amg number 85 we, we got in in the lead and were able to, to increase the lead a little bit, which is good over the course of the stint. Um, the track temperatures are higher now than they were yesterday, so the balance of the car is different and changing, but the Hankook tires held up fine, and uh, it's still a long way to go. Leader in the A6 Pro Class, the number 77 Lamborghini Huracan Evo. Yes, the car was pretty well, and it felt amazing. Barwell has done a great job and also Lamborghini with this new Evo car. It feels amazing in this track, it, it's pretty good. The Rinaldi Ferrari number 69 in the gravel after a contact with a car they know very well. So our sister car hit me and yeah, that was Montemini and that was, yeah, bad luck. The 69 Rinaldi Ferrari able to continue in the race and we're back to green flag racing. But in the pit lane, problems for the crossbow number 217. Unfortunately, the same thing like on the other car. We seem to have a problem with our fuel pressure in, in the high pressure rail. It's a direct injection turbo engine and the high pressure seems to drift away after a while of running. It did on one car yesterday and we lost the engine because it's simply running then too lean and the piston melt and the same happened to this car. So obviously we made a mistake in somewhere in our development and we copied the mistake on both cars. Hopefully we will see on the other car whether we, we fixed it or not. But if not, then it's gonna be stressful. A problem at pit entry for the number 869, which requires a push from the marshals to get it into the pit lane and their own pit crew. The Antriebswellen abgeschert beim Anbremsen vor der Start- und Zielkurve. And he just came uh, on the last corner, he came down and then the forward doesn't working. He make a big noise in the car like da 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 and then stop the car exactly in the pit entry. So that was the reason for uh, the Code 60. The 909 is off track and it's not the first Porsche that's had a spin here in the race. It looks like Porsche drivers are having a hard time with this track. But it's the main thing that we love a Porsche because it's a car with mechanical grip. It's not like GT3 car, which have active aero, so this is only like a karting. So for me, it's a, it's a nice car to drive because I should be always wet when I'm driving. The balance of performance for the Ferraris were changed before the race started. But with the number 11 car in the lead, it looks like it hasn't been a real disadvantage. Uh, actually, it was because we lost like 15 horsepower, maybe. And I don't understand why, because that was exactly... Uh, 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 what we got the pressure in the turbo lower so I don't know why because we were not faster than the other cars but uh, I have to say Matteo on the ra this race circuit is pretty good because he's here at home so still fighting five hours to go let's take a look at the standings the GT classes over on the right hand side of the screen Overall, in the GTs, it's the Bohemia Energy number 11 Ferrari. But after seven hours of racing, the second place number 77 Barwell Lamborghini is still on the lead lap. The 91 Porsche from Herbeth Motorsport has been going strongly for some time now. They're in third. Here's the TCE classes popping up on the right hand side. The 112 Volkswagen of Autorama leads the class and has been trying to put a lap on the second placed Audi, the number 188 from AC Motorsport. They haven't quite been able to do that, so first and second still on the same lap. Third in TCE, the Homeguard Motorsport Volkswagen number 102. Although the Creventic series is open to professional and gentleman drivers, in its DNA and its rules, it really focuses on the amateur teams and driving talent. 
Here we have not the manufacturers, and the Nürburgring, you have a lot of manufacturers. And we are a private team, and we have every time to, to work against the, the, um, the factories. And that's not nice for me, because we are amateur and not profis. Here you are welcome. At the Nürburgring you have mostly problems. And um, so we, we are happy to be here. One good reason for the 24-hour series is the, the track time, because the drivers like him to have a lot of track time. So in our, also our strategy like it's, it's our gentleman drivers, I like to drive the whole so in one row each time, so not, not only driving two hours and the rest the pros, so that they like to drive a lot, so they like to drive at the same time like the pros. And uh, difference is also for us, it's more easy to handle this series, like in the Blanc Pain or like something like that. It's really welcoming to small teams like us, so it's easy to build up the, the pits and all the rest, so for us it's easy to handle. They run a good show and you know they made some major changes in the championship from last year. Uh, the price structure changed hugely for the A3 and A2 classes and that's definitely attracted us to stay now and we're entering the whole season this year. Preventing is a long distance, it's 12 or 24 hours and uh, what I have done uh, is Supercoach is always one hour on a Saturday, one hour on a Sunday. So, uh, But this is, yeah, you have more fun and, uh, for a longer period, so that's good. Yeah, I like really much uh, the endurance racing. The KTM uh, is actually, there are actually short races, half an hour races in the battle. And uh, here these are 12 or 24 hour races, which is for me much more convenient because uh, we can fight as a team and this is for me better. And we love the Creventic events. We love these 12 hours and 24 hours. We've, uh, I've driven myself for many years, many races as a driver and uh, we really enjoy it. As a team, it's super easy to enter. It's cost effective. Uh, it's a lot of driving and uh, the competition is, as you said, really, really good. So. We're enjoying it and we will do plenty more races. It's a good place to spend time with my friends. We make uh, teamwork, not just uh, one driver. Uh, and uh, for me, it's main goal to be here. Endurance racing, a true test, not just for the drivers and the crew, but also for the cars. The Cooper number 101 has already had its fair share of issues and needs another 15 minutes of attention from the team. The hope of a good finish has now been lost. Uh, well, I think at this stage we just got to try and finish. I think we were trying to aim for top 10, um, but unfortunately I think that's not possible at this stage, so we're just going to try and get home, that's all. The number 88 Audi from the car collection team was in the race for the overall win. Technical issues have cost them too much time to still be in contention. The team did set the fastest lap time. Yeah, today I set the fastest lap time of the race, so that was good. Also the fastest sectors uh, are from us, from me, so... We are really happy with the pace of the car and uh, we will just see where we end up today. Good endurance driving means you have to keep an eye in the mirror for anyone faster than you. But you could have all the mirrors in the world. That's not going to help you too much if your car's experiencing technical issues. Uh, looks like some technical problems. Uh, looks like we have no oil pressure and now the team will check what's happened. So nothing to say more. And that uh, I saw the red lights on the dashboard and so on. Oil pressure, so I switch the off engine and go to the safety place. That's all. There's always plenty of action in a mixed field, and it's that mixed field that attracts drivers. You have a very fast GT3 cars, and you have the, the slow TCR cars, and yeah, it's very special. Christian is about to start his next stint. What does he expect? Yeah, yeah, let's look. So, so I will do my best, and yeah, we have two changes and from the car and so we 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 see yeah it's an amazing race so i like it a cold 60 is called the mercedes number 406 not able to stop in time as in uh, the code 16 uh, the ferrari in uh, have a break a fast break i don't uh, i don't have uh, the time for a break and the crash the ferrari at the break in this code 16 uh, is no good it's no good it's not possible to repair it yes Car collection 33 also off the track. After the cold 60 uh, fast, uh, our car won't overtake a small one, and uh, one Ferrari, uh, as, uh, from the green, one green one, uh, won't, won't also overtake. Yes, and these two car touched, 
and finish. The Wackenspiegel number 22 Ferrari was fighting for a podium position, but is also off track as a result of an earlier incident. Because of the crash, my aero was not this what, what I, it should be. It was the other way, and therefore I lost my car. Code 60, drama, there's a car on fire on the track. It's hard to see behind the barriers, but it's the other Wackenspiegel car, the number 21. Everything was fine, the driver went out, and then um, he just said, OK, uh, fire, fire, fire. And then uh, he stopped, but um, the race director said he stopped at the um, right time, at the right place, and he reacted the right way. Uh, he got out of the car, and then um, the uh, marshals extinguished the, the fire, uh, and now we have to make the car ready for the next race in Spa. <laughs> Great to see the team is determined to return. Double issues for the Monlau team. The number 107 has to come in with a broken damper, but for the 109 car, that's the car that finished yesterday's leg of the race in the lead, it's out. Basically, we have an accident with another car and uh, was it Rabiata due, high to speed corner and we crash. Basically, is that. Yeah, the driver seems that it's okay, but we don't have any answer on the radio, but the colleague said that it's okay, so it's a big crash and uh, we guess that everything is okay. The first few hours of the second part of the Hangul 12 Hours Mugello 2019 was going quite smooth, but in the last uh, few hours, now being uh, at a three hour to go mark, uh, we've experienced many cold 60s with uh, cars suffering uh, damages, uh, also being in the gravel, because uh, here each, each time a car is in the gravel, we need a cold 60 phase to uh, recover a car safely. Um, but the track officials, they're doing a good job in, uh, in uh, making uh, the flag go green as uh, fast as possible um, uh, after the Code 60 has been initiated. Sadly for the organisers, and more so for the teams, the problems didn't end here. Harry Hilders in the NKPP 991 Porsche is the next one to bring out a purple flag. He came in because his, uh, in his stint, his last stint, he came in uh, because his left rear tyre had a puncture. Then he got a new tyre, then he went out again, and uh, after two laps uh, on the straight, he, uh, the, the, the tyre uh, was gone. And with uh, uh, top speed, he loses control because the tyre is gone on the left rear side. And he uh, turns right, and then he starts spinning, 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 and uh, end of the race. So maybe there's something, some part of the uh, racetrack is loose, we don't know. Uh, but it's, it's amazing how many tyres uh, blow up, so that's the thing. Whilst the marshals recover the NKPP Porsche, let's take a look at the standings. With a quarter of the race still to go, the gaps between the top three have increased. Bohemia Energy's Ferrari has got a couple of laps over Barwell Motorsport's Lamborghini, and they've got a lap in hand over the 91 Porsche from Herbert Motorsport in third. It's only Porsches in the 991 category, the oldest being the Teichmann Racing number 903. Leading at the moment, the Race Union number 987, they've got a lap over the Porsche Laureate number 912, and the NKPP 991 still shown in third position. Position. In TCR, Autorama number 112 lead by a lap, the Audi from AC Motorsport number 188 is second, and Lestrup Racing Team number 110 is third. This is endurance. Endurance, wow. Well, it just means it's, it's just so complicated and involved. It's just a brilliant challenge for the drivers, but and for the teams, you know. The planning starts months in advance, detail, strategy, it's just a such a fantastic sport and uh, these Preventic 24 hour races are really you know they're a tough challenge but we love that challenge that's what we live for there have been many visitors to Mugello for this race weekend including some who are here in an official capacity my name is Barra Pasulungi I'm the export sales manager for Libe he is Lorenzo Invernizzi and he is the owner from the company Libe. And we are here because we are partner of 24 hour series as we are the suppliers for the trophies of the races. And those who stand on the podium at the fifth Hancock 12 hours of Mugello will once again have to work out how to get those trophies back home on the plane. 
Uh, we tried always to make something uh, that is an answer of what the customer asks us, uh, of what is his idea. And we try to find the best solution um, to, to be the, the perfect results on what they ask and on what are they, that they needed, he said. And uh, in, this, in this way, in this case, uh, he asked for an Italian flag, uh, something uh, simply as uh, the competition, as the, the, the people are, and we try to find a solution for them. Lieber supplies trophies to sporting events all over the world. So why the partnership with Creventic? Uh, 24 hour series is more um, is more important for us uh, because uh, um, they have races uh, uh, all around the world and uh, uh, we try to um, to keep in contact with them uh, since many years uh, and finally we found a window <laughs> uh, with uh, uh, the same uh, um, the same goal uh, and the, the best thing we found here is that they are like a very big family and everything here is friendly, simply, and it's good. This is the, the best way to work with the best person to work. It's finally is like our company, simply and uh, friendly and like a big family, as our company is. Barbara and Lorenzo are Italian motorsport lovers. And so, on it to be on the podium here in Mugello. I, I think I, I have no words to say. Uh, it's not only fun, it's uh, something I can't describe. Uh, it's really, really a, a big emotion, really. Back in the race, and many teams have taken advantage of the Code 60 to come in for fuel and have their tyres changed. One of the regular entrants to Creventi competition is Herbert Motorsport and they've brought a brand new Porsche 911 Generation 2. Uh, with the 91 car we are on P3 now. I think we are two laps behind P2 but also two laps in front of P4. So we are for the first race with the new car we are, we are quite happy. And the second car is on P5 in the AMP class and I think we can reach also the P3. So we are in fight for P3. Sometimes endurance racing can be a little like dancing. The cars weaving from left to right, swaying around the other battles that are taking place. But not everyone comes through these dances unscathed. Uh, a bit bruised, really. Um, we think we've been hit by every car out there now. We've got a lot of damage on ours, but a uh, typical sort of uh, synchro style. We're not going to give up yet. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't look like we can catch second place. So um, just got to keep plugging on now and try and consolidate third. Sometimes, no matter how hard you try, an accident is just waiting for you in your blind spot. Yeah, the accident, it was a very slow car on track and uh, he was uh, overtaken by a Porsche, was directly behind the Porsche. The Porsche can uh, avoid the collision just in the last moment, but he didn't see the car in front of this and uh, crash into this car. And this car was very, very slow, like 20 k's on, on the track. So why was the BMW so slow on track? He had a tire puncture in the chicane, I think it was. And uh, two cars were fighting behind him and the KTM Expo uh, did a, for my opinion, stupid move and uh, crashed into, into our car. Alex Prince joined the Hoffa Racing Team a couple of events ago and in his outing today in the number 10, it's clear to see he's improved over the last few races. Uh, for me, it was really like uh, cold water, um, I, like I got uh, inside the car. Um, for me, I just needed um, a few, a little more driving time. Um, yeah, and now I feel really comfortable inside the car. I really can feel what the car, how its behavior and what I have to do when um, I live, when I really get oversteer, understeer. Um, so I'm, I feel more comfortable and part of the car right now. So that makes it. Better for me, easier and quite fun. Currently second overall, the Barwell Motorsport Lamborghini number 77. Yeah, we've had a really strong race. Uh, it's our first race with the new Lamborghini Huracan Evo um, and it's been really fantastic. Uh, we like the event and it's been a strong race for us. Unfortunately, some of the Code 60s didn't quite fall our way, so 
we've fallen away a little bit, but I'm still happy with the overall team and driver performance. As the end of the race approaches, the number 11 Ferrari leads the GT class, four laps the advantage now, but in the TCE series, the lead is much smaller. It's very close, we lead the race, but it's only 20 seconds between the cars, so it's, uh, it's difficult. We make a good job, we work strong, we make a lot of training for pit stops and everything and good strategy and yeah, we give all the time our best. Yeah, it's, oh, I'm nervous. There's a lot of drivers out there who aren't feeling calm. A big battle is on for the third position. Right now he's very nervous, yes, of course. It takes a lot to uh, prepare on everything and all the team has they've made a tremendous job so we really would like to have our second job place this. I think this is our fourth season and uh, with the TCR car and uh, our last race was Kota uh, where we was placed number three. So uh, this may be our second, third place in a row. Three minutes of racing to go and the race leader has to drop back as there's a purple code 60 flag waving again. It's for the car collection number 88. This close to the end of the race, and it's in the gravel. There's no way the track can be cleared before the chequered flag, so the second day of racing ends just as the first, under the purple code 60 flag. The overall win goes to Bohemia Energy Racing with Scuderia Praha. And with no overtaking allowed in the last few minutes of the race, Autorama were able to hold on to their lead in the TCE division, their Volkswagen number 112. For us, it is a little unfortunate that we needed to finish uh, under code 60 conditions, but safety comes first and um, we were enjoying a great weekend with a full grid, many uh, teams and drivers, so we're happy uh, to have Mugello as the start of our European season championship. And this was a perfect race for us. We were also lucky with the Code 60, but the team uh, and all, all the drivers did, I think, uh, a fantastic job. It was quite okay. It was, um, it was just bringing it home. We knew we could not uh, fetch the, the number 11 car. It was just out of our reach, so uh, it, was, it was nice. It was driving it home, more or less. I am happy, but uh, I like to be there next time, next time. Yeah, what a race. So. After that start and as uh, all the amateurs did all the most of the race, we are very ha happy about it. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, that was a good one. Uh, we were running into a few issues towards the end and took calls out about running out of the but we're very, very happy about this podium, finally. Very good. It was perfect. It was really, really funny. It's the best ever. It's really, really funny. It was so funny. when uh, It was tough at the end, but it's uh, really, really funny to win then. Clearly, everyone had a lot of fun. Let's have a look at how the race ended in all the classes. The top three in the GT division, Bohemia Energy team with their number 11 Ferrari will take home the biggest Lieber trophy. Barwell Motorsport has their number 77 Lamborghini claiming second spot, with Herbert Motorsport and their number 91 Porsche in third. In the TCE division, a nice round 300 laps completed by the winning Autorama number 112, the AC Motorsport Audi number 188 missed out by just 26 seconds and Leicester up racing a third with the 110. A6 Pro for the overall winner, Bohemia Energy number 11 Ferrari. Hoffa Racing Mercedes number 10 wins the big trophy for the A6 Am class. In 991, the Porsche Laureant 912 takes the top step of the podium. In SP2, the KTM Crossball 224 from RTR Projects takes the win. GT4, the number 50 wins the trophy for Hoffa Racing by Bonk Motorsport. In the TCE categories, Autorama 112 takes the trophy for the TCR class. In SP3, the number 312 of Amag First Century Porsche takes home the win. And last, but by no means least, the 685 Peugeot of Dan Agro Racing are the proud winners of Class A3. Next race will be uh, at Spa, Belgium, in uh, only three weeks. We're going to do a 12-hour Spa, and probably with the Audi and with the Porsche, with two cars. 
Undoubtedly an exciting weekend. Well, some teams will be needing to work very hard to get their car turned around with less than three weeks until racing is back underway at the circuit of Spa. It's a split race there too. Four hours on Good Friday, the 19th of April. Eight hours on Saturday, the 20th. That means everyone can get home for Easter Sunday. Be there as a spectator or as a competitor. All of the information you need is on 24hseries.com.